Uh, Emily, is this going to be an issue? Uh, you know, obviously there are a couple of other Catholics in that mix here, so I don't want to pay too much attention to that outside of the thing saying that she is particularly or ended up being particularly vocal on some issues or deemed vocal on these issues uh, as a Notre Dame, a Notre Dame law school grad, et cetera. How much of an issue could this be for her? Right, and there's actually, I think, three Catholics sitting That's on the right. bench right now. Um, and so, but I actually think with her, this is going to be an issue. It was an issue in her confirmation earlier. Diane Feinstein sort of famously said, the dogma lives loudly within her. And that was, you know, transformed into a rallying cry by pro-life Catholics that wanted to see her confirmed and sort of thought what Feinstein said had been reflective of the Democratic Party's views towards Catholics. Now, what I think this shows really more than anything is how threatened the Democratic Party feels currently um, about the state of abortion law. But depending on who was appointed to the seat. And so there's going to be a lot of pressure on Lisa Murkowski and Susan Collins, um, who are both more pro-choice than most of the rest of their party. And so that's where you could see this becoming a huge, a uh, huge thing if Amy Coney Barrett is nominated. Her confirmation process will be a lot of questions about Roe v. Wade, and that'll add to so much pressure um, on Collins and Murkowski about their votes going forward. So this, this, if she is nominated, this will not go away. This will be a huge narrative surrounding her nomination. You know, uh, no matter who it ultimately is, Emily, I know you and I chatted about this, it, 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 will, be, it will be a tough battle. Uh, that, that's probably an understatement on my part, but uh, getting all the Republican votes would be an uphill battle, just as you said with Susan Collins and Elise Murkowski. Uh, then you have to get some Democratic support, and maybe you have a, a chance with those up for re-election in Trump-won states like Joe Manchin of West Virginia, what have you, uh, Heidi Heitkamp of, of North Dakota. But what do you make of that? Yeah, there's two reasons. Um, and the first is there's two reasons that this is going to be close no matter what. The first is because Republicans hold such a slim majority in the Senate right now. And the second is that we're in midterm season and the Senate map for Democrats is so tough. There are 10 vulnerable Democratic incumbents running for reelections in states that President Trump won. So that puts, you know, your Joe Donnelly's, your Joe Manchin's, your um, Heidi Heitkamp's in a really tough position. Those three voted for Gorsuch. Part of the appeal for Amy Coney Barrett is that she's from Indiana. You kind of, it's, it's amazing a really big appeal for Joe Donnelly's vote. I think you will see those three vote the same, um, which of course would out vote the same with, uh, with President Trump on his nominee, which of course would outweigh, you know, you can lose Collins or Murkowski in that case, but it's exactly like you're just saying, the math here, no matter how you do it, it's not going to be easy no matter what. All right. We shall see. Always good seeing you, Emily. Thank you very, very much. Thanks, Neil.